This is The Fitting Lab, an EVE Online ship fitting video series. Today, we're going in depth on the Tech 3 tactical destroyer from the Kaldari State. It's as agile as a cheetah and as fast as a kangaroo. It's the Jackdaw. And welcome back to The Fitting Lab, uh, where today we are covering, of course, the Jackdaw, which is not, it's not a ship that I have a hell of a lot of experience with. In fact, I don't think I even have a kill of any description with the Jackdaw. Uh, however, I am joined today by my good friend, Matthias Salenis, who does have a little bit of experience with flying the Jackdaw. So thanks again for coming on, Mathea. Hello Rico, thanks for having me, and yeah, I definitely love the Jagdo, it's one of my favorite ships for doing solo PvP in Nullsec. It's also a great gang ship, so there is a lot of, shit of things you can do with a Jagdo. Okay, yeah, I don't, yeah, like I said, I don't have a lot of experience with the ship, but I have seen what you've been doing with it. Um, yeah, Matthias, I guess mainly been sort of Nullsec with the ship, and uh what, killing a lot of PvE guys as well as some PvPers? Yeah, basically it's a it's a great ship for Nullsec because you can you can kill pretty much uh, most most uh, writing ships there uh, quite mm -hmm. easily, especially if they don't pay much attention and don't have light drones. Uh, and you can also easily pick up uh, some tackle ships from the response fleet when yeah. people fo yep. form it. So it's it's really a great nagging kite ship, uh, but it's also great uh, in uh, low sec in other areas of space. It's mm -hmm. actually a decent PV ship as well. So there is really really a lot of things you can do with it. So let's take a look at the traits for the Jackdaw now, uh, and we can see here. So we have a three percent bonus to light missile and rocket launcher rate of fire, uh, fifteen percent reduction to missile launcher reload time, uh, five percent reduction to module heat damage. Okay, so we can heat quite a lot with this, uh, and I believe the reload time thing is actually quite significant there, with fifteen percent. That is per level for the Kaldari tactical destroyer skill. Uh, now, of course, this yeah. is... Yeah, did you want to say something about that? Yeah, this is often an overlooked bonus, the reload time. But first, yeah, for sure, the heat damage is something really great, really huge. Mm -hmm. uh, it's one one of the reasons you can use uh, Tech 3 destroyers so efficiently is that you can hit uh, more than your Pretty opponent in Tech 1 heat, ships or... and even in Tech 2 ships. Um, Depends on the module. Uh, some will be perma heated, uh, but yeah, you can, for example, your even your guns that um, take damage relatively fast, uh, you can hit them for at least thirty seconds straight without mm. without any problem, and okay. it gives a lot of boost. Uh, same for your prop mod, you have more hit cycle that you can do on your prop mod, which is actually a very huge thing if you yeah, if that you're would in be... a one one v one situation. Mm. against the tech one cruiser say you're gonna hit be able to hit your prop mod longer than your opponent and that's that's usually uh will give you a very big advantage because you're gonna dictate the the engagement yeah i can and definitely also, yeah the, yeah yeah for the real time now uh, this is very often overlooked but it's actually amazing for this ship it means that you can start a fight, shoot uh, one or two volleys, and notice that you're doing less damage than you've expected. So, for example, um, you see that somebody, like you're shooting at a confessor, you the, you know that the confessor is weak to thermal, so you mm -hmm. try to shoot uh, one volley of thermal, and you see that you do almost no damage. So you can you know that you can immediately ah, you know switch to the then, second yeah. weak. Yeah. Yep. So you you. So you can actually, it's actually all, almost always worth it to stop your guns and, how and quick reload is, because... How quick is the reload time? Is it like laser quick or...? Yeah, it's more like, like I would say blasters, blasters quick. So like between blasters, blasters okay. and lasers, it's, it's actually really quick. So yeah, 
definitely so about one and a half, for... two seconds type thing. Yeah, same if you're grinding a cruiser with a reactive armor harder. Like you notice that you're doing less and less damage each shot. Ah, and you can switch up the damage so the, the REH has to re um adjust yeah. again. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Okay. Yeah, I can see I can see how then yeah, with with using the fast reload in that way, especially with your um selectable damage, I can see how that could be I guess a bit of an advanced tactic where you could get a little bit extra out of this ship. Uh, well, let's get let's get moving on with the basic traits here. Um, so, I guess something with a tactical destroyer is that you do have a little bit more, like I guess, module management there with the uh, with the different modes. So you have three different modes with a Tech Three destroyer. Obviously, you have defense mode, propulsion mode, and sharpshooter mode. Uh, defense mode, obviously, you're going to be tankier. Propulsion mode, you will be quicker. And sharpshooter mode, you will do a little bit more damage. Uh, let's go and take a look at the slot layout for the Jackdaw. Uh, so we have six highs, we have five mediums, and we have a uh, we have three lows and then three rig slots there. Um, so let's go let's go straight into our first fit here. So let me bring that up. Uh, now this is a solo kitey fit i think mathia is this like the main one that you're using in nullsec at the moment yeah this is this is my main fit that i use for uh, for solo mm -hmm. and i i'm gonna explain a bit how i use it but like first i i can like even come back to the jagdo with the five mids and three lows it's uh this kind of layout means that if you want to go crazy on on the fitting idea you can actually do it so there is yeah, not a lot a lot of jack slots, fits. Yeah. yeah. Uh usually when you fit a ship, you kind of fit a prop mod, uh one or two tackle mods, you fit your tank, uh you fit a couple damage mods, mm. and uh usually at that point you're pretty done because you've used all your fitting space. Uh, the Jackdo is not like that. So even if, if you fit that, you still have uh a lot, a lot of slots uh, left and a lot of freaks left. You often don't even need uh, fitting mods. And so, yeah, uh, all the fits uh, that we're going to see are highly tweakable uh, to your own taste, mm -hmm. to your own piloting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's having a, a ship with a lot of mid slots is always something that, like, that I really enjoy flying because you have a lot of options for utility and different E War. Uh, options there as well um so what do yes, you want to exactly. say what do we want to say generally about the solo kite fit um so have you designed this in, like with a specific purpose in mind or uh, yes well it pretty much comes naturally because the the jagdo is uh, is a great kiter because it has um the sweet sharpshooter bonus so usually sharpshooter mode will give you uh, better damage for t3ds and also better usually better application or a bit more range but the way light missiles work this this a bit more range turns out to be like completely crazy mm -hmm. uh, so you get uh you get a really really huge um missile uh is it flight no it's, it's i think it's velocity time, yeah. Of flight time bonus, uh, so it's uh, the result is uh, the Jagdo is a small, fast warping kiting ship that can, without any um, range mod, uh, hit at 80 kilometers, like 70, 80 kilometers. So it's uh, by default just activating the sharpshooter modes give you a typical long range destroyer. Uh, that does a lot of damage, even with uh, just a little damage mods above 200 DPS, with perfect application. So, if you f if you fit it for for kiting, uh, that's the ship the ship I use. Mm -hmm. You basically have a micro drive, a point. You have um, the medium shield extender. You yep. have a lot of damage mods. 
And one thing uh, that is great with the Jagdo is it has a um, very, very high agility. So it has more more agility than, yeah, than most yeah. frigates, actually. It doesn't have a very huge top speed, but with like just one uh, nano in the lows, you can make it almost insta-warp. So that's, that's a great advantage for a solo roaming ship. Wow, and especially yeah, it is. For a it lines ship. super quick. It's almost, yeah, it's almost two, it's two and a half seconds for my skills with propulsion mode. Yeah, it's that's with the prop mod on, so it's even less with the prop mod Oh, off. that's true. Yeah, good point. And wow, yeah. So is that insta warp then? Under, because it's under two seconds now, it's 1.7, whatever. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's insta warping. Hmm. If you okay. if you have the the prop mod off, so you um, it's really great for roaming. Obviously, the bubbles will still uh, force you to burn, but yep. the agility means that you you reach your top speed very fast. Mm -hmm. So even though you're not that fast, uh, this ability to like turn very sharply, very quickly, will allow you to outplay uh, a lot of a lot of gangs and a lot of camps. So it's definitely a very, very fast traveling agile ship. Uh, it has um, very high damage, like, considering it's selectable. It will actually break uh, most uh, active tanks that, that have a bit of projection or that have a bit of speed, so that are dangerous to you. And I believe you can. I believe your alpha is quite high as well. Is that is that right? Yes, it's kind of the the, the new flycatcher in that mm. sense. So you used to use um, tech to destroyers that uh, f like the heretic and the flycatchers uh, as anti tackle ships because they would basically the alpha of of this um, this jagdo is above uh, one thousand dps. Uh, so yeah. an untanked frigate is uh, something like 2.5, like a very, uh, like a poorly fit uh, yellow tackle ship is to yeah 2.5 three uh, thousand um, EHP. It o you only need three shots to uh, get rid of it because it's mm -hmm. not gonna be tank anything because it will have MWD on. Uh, so you can. Yeah, uh, a lot of these small ships, I, before they realize the amount of damage you can put on them. Yeah, you can just, I can imagine you away. could definitely just blast, especially an active tanked frigate or fast tackle um, off the field pretty quickly, yeah. Oh yeah, especially if like it's something, especially if it's active tank, definitely. Yeah, yeah. And even if it's passive Even if tank, it's passive, it's, for sure, yeah. It's, it's going to melt fast. Uh, the interceptors will take you a bit longer because yeah. they will actually speed tank um, the damage if they if mm -hmm. they are mm -hmm. good pilots yeah um, if they if they ram into you uh, you can just web them and they're gonna take full damage and they're gonna die very fast though yeah so that's yeah. that's pretty much one of the purposes why I fit I could fit more tank but I kind of prefer having more control and more rely on piloting than on my tank. So that means that like, I will warp away a lot of times just because I cannot sustain a lot of damage. So sum up then, sum up the solo kite fit for us. So it's quite low, uh, it's quite low tank, but it has good DPS and good alpha. It's pretty agile. And it's sort of middling speed, I suppose. Is is that a, a pretty good sum up of the solo kite jackdaw? Yes, uh, it's it's a, it's a good sum up, and indeed it's middle speed. So you have to be careful because uh, some fast cruisers will be actually faster than you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you definitely have to to watch out for this. Uh, one thing I would like to add that I've already said, but. Like you can you can say it uh, every minute with the Jago. <laughs> yeah. It's just the insane range you have. Yeah, you gives can really... you a lot of control, yeah. and it gives you. The fun thing is, like for example, if people bring a caracal, you cannot come close to the caracal because it's just gonna melt you with mm -hmm. the damage very fast. Mm -hmm. 
But you can you can just sit 80 kilometers from the Caracal and shoot at him. Yeah. And like actually do significant damage, force him to run his MWD and his invuln. And after after a minute, this Caracal is gonna have no cap. So so you can you can really um, annoy people that bring uh, big stuff uh, to fight you, like stuff that is too big for you to uh, to fight. You can annoy these people and force them to kind of react to what you do and bring like either they need to bring even bigger toys uh, or they need to bring fast tackle to uh, uh, land a scram on you, but you can kill that fast. So, yeah, uh, it's it's that's why I think it's a it's a great ship for uh, for solo because not only it's flexible, but you can also f kind of force people to uh, play your game. You even have auto targeting missiles, so these are these are funny. If you're jammed, for example, you can. Um, Again, the reload bonus means that like you can reload to anything you want whenever you want. Mm. You just have to be to get used to that big uh, uh, drop uh, drop down menu with a lot of uh, yeah, ammunition yeah. to select, so you select yeah. it fast. Yeah, of course, uh, there'll and, be a lot of different yeah ammo types there. Yeah, but that's that's something you can like do is just uh, if you're jammed, you load auto targeting missiles and you burn you burn into that griffin that is a bit mm. on the side of the fleet and you just you just kill him and like he doesn't understand what's what's happening and he just dies yeah so it's okay. uh it's so always auto, funny auto targeting yeah. how do you make sure that you're going to hit the ecm ship if you're uh, if you're using an auto targeting missile you're not they are they are picked and they work poorly but uh, they will hit something <laughs> so at least you have a chance right so so you basically you want to just you want to try and burn i guess to a position where the the um yeah the ecm yeah, when, ship is closest to you but yeah at the when, edge when of your range have... sort of thing yeah exactly exactly right. you want to be uh, you don't really want to do that uh, if you risk being tackled and yeah also uh, speaking of ECM one thing we overlooked with the, sh the, sh the sharpshooter bonus is that now a sharpshooter gives you um, resistance to e-war such as yeah. ECM mm -hmm. sensor dampeners uh, missile disruption Mm -hmm. for like uh, for what is useful for us uh, this is actually super super huge because um, usually a traditional way of um, just shutting down so that kind of uh, fast uh, long range uh, KT ships is just to bring sensor dumps so you just dump them and they cannot shoot past 20 yeah. kilometers because yeah. they just cannot lock past 20 kilometers mm. uh, but the the jaglo is just comp in sharpshooter mode is just completely undumpable because the base the the base uh, locking range is uh, 130 kilometers or something like that uh -huh. and on top of that it has a resistance to dumps so yeah. even if it's fully dumped it's gonna still it's gonna still lock perfectly in its uh, fighting range interesting so okay it's, yeah. So there's that no way to damp this ship below its projection range. Yep. And makes also it great in a gang at um, clearing uh, enemy EVO ships. Mm. Mm -hmm. Because it's uh, it's not fully immune, but it's very strong against, and it can't project far away. That's Remind probably me. leads us to the, to the next uh, feat, actually. Yeah, okay. Yep, Just quickly ahead. before we do the next feat, in the cargo here you've got anti pharmacon toxic what was that ex again yeah um sadly this this booster was very cheap uh, a couple of months ago with the previous project discovery now mm -hmm. it's a bit more expensive uh, but it's a very useful booster for uh, kiting with light missiles it's it gives you a little bit more flight time mm -hmm. but yep. added to the um, added to the huge uh, base uh, flight time of the Jagdo, the bonus of the sharpshooter mod, and I have like in my feet I have one uh, long uh, one rig for longer range. Mm -hmm. um, if you drop the web, you could have a guidance computer there for even yep. longer 
uh, yeah. range, and the the booster, the Toxot, will gives you will give you something like ten kilometers, a bit less than ten kilometers more range. So if you if you start going for range, it's fairly easy to get a Jagdo that can shoot uh, to one hundred ten kilometers and even longer. Wow. Okay. Okay. Awesome. So that's a, that's a missile range uh, booster then. All right. So moving on yes. to the gang fit, I guess we'll blow through the rest of these pretty quick. Um, so the gang fit, pretty similar to the solo kite fit, only obviously you're going to use it with a gang. Uh, it's a little bit more tanky. So we're actually talking, you know, some decent-ish tank here. 23k EHP, it's telling me. Is that what we we're going to get with all fives, Mathia, pretty much? Uh, yes, actually, uh, when you speak about uh, three destroyers, always hit your invulnerability field because mm -hmm. you you have a bonus for hitting. So as to something like the invulnerability field, you can pretty much hit it throughout the fight yeah, for a that's very very you can long probably, time. Yeah, hit quite a, for quite a while. Yeah. And uh, if you hit it on this ship, uh, it's actually pretty crazy the tank you have. So you you first have twenty about twenty six k HP tank. That's your buffer. Mm -hmm. But you also have uh, your resists are super high. So you have uh, almost eighty percent across the board. You have a, an EM hole. So yeah, it looks like definitely a bit of an don't EM hole. don't don't want to be hit by long range laser ships. Yeah, but. Um, for the rest, 80% across the board and 25k EHP means that if you're a gang with uh, Logi, uh, you will actually be tanking the other, ga the other gang uh, pretty efficiently. Yeah. Uh, so this ship is like it's, it's not meant for really using its tank, but it can go in defense mode and tank a lot. But for the for the rest, it's um, it's mainly the same feel as before. Yeah. But uh, with this kind of uh, buffer, because if you're fighting a, a large gang buffer, with your yeah. gang, yeah. you yeah you kind of really need to you, not yeah you can't uh, have not be less forced to walk away. HP. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you can so in the, in this fit you have a warp disruptor, but as always with the Jagdo, uh, if you if you have already a dedicated tackle with your gang, which you probably should have, uh, and it's going to be much better at going in point range. So you can drop this, this disruptor for another guidance computer, or mm. if, you, uh, if you're if worried about uh, laser, uh, long range laser ships, you ah, can fit okay, an EM yeah. rig. Yeah, you could, yeah. An EM uh, amplifier, sorry, EM amplifier, or even yeah. uh, even 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 maybe an active one Another if you maybe. if you manage your cap well. And yeah, the other sure. thing uh, often overlooked is uh, the ability to fit an expanded probe launcher. That's great for gangs and that's great for solo. Uh, so for solo, you can obviously just scan people that are not not paying attention, and you can actually get a lot of kills that way. Uh, and for a gang, it's actually very useful because uh, you're. You can what you can do is just pre-launch your probes and set them on yourself on like the smallest radius and whenever you need uh, a warp a in, warp to in. The yeah gun, you can just insta yeah, yeah you just insta press, grab it yeah just yep. press scan and yeah. you can choose uh you can choose to warp to like an isolated target or just warp at range to to the enemy gang yeah okay so if you're sitting 150 off grid with someone just constantly have your probes sitting there and yeah you can just you can just go and pop whatever whatever is more than 150 off and, and warp to it or warp to it at range or, or whatever you want yes exactly yeah and, and with the uh... expanded with the expanded probe launcher i'm seeing for my skills here that i um like one power grid short of being able to online it, uh, should yes. I be able to online it with the, or, or do I need a, do I need a one percent uh, power grid implant? You actually, I think you even need a two percent power grid implant. Ah, but, okay. uh, what I would do usually is I would just um, it depends on on the situation. So you might you might go around with implants, mm -hmm. um, but 
I would just uh, offline the ballistic control, for example, and yep. online the probe launcher. If I feel that I need it, uh, it's always possible to do that. Or you can offline the warp disruptor, for example. Which is, I like, mean, not, if you fit something a big like deal. if you fit something like a compact medium shield extender, is that going to nerf your tank too much, or? Uh, actually, I think the Relic Fleet is the one that takes the least power grid uh, before the storylines ones that are uh, yeah, that are right there, really yeah. more expensive. Yep. But yep. Can, the Republic can Fleet check. probably probably is the easiest fitting until you get to something crazy. Yeah, yeah, you would you would need two storylines there, uh, mm. which is gonna cost you twenty million more total, which is well, I, I think it's. It's not the best, uh, yeah. the best choice. What you could do is uh, like this is an all five fits and it's pretty tight. But what you could do, like usually, I think the the, the goon swarm fit has instead of the nano, it will have a um, power, power di diagnostic system there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and that's going to give you so a bit you of can, extra cap you, life yeah, as well. Yeah, you can do that, but you're losing you're losing speed. So you are losing speed. Yeah, yeah, which is I, I'd, ra I'd rather thing. be forced to manage my ship a bit more, manage yeah, my cap, right. online, offline stuff, and have have the speed. But that's that's more a personal choice. You can mm. choose to to go with a bit uh, a bit lower uh, speed and lower align time. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's keep moving through these. So we've got uh, a dual prop passive fit next. So this is using rockets and then dual prop. So we do have a tech two afterburner and a quad life restrained micro warp drive. Okay, so this one's the passive one. Again, we're doing two Republic fleet medium shield extenders. It looks to be about the same sort of uh, EHP. Um, what's the yeah, general idea with, with this one? Yeah, it's going to be like a, still a bit a bit better tank because you have the damage control and you have better like full resist rigs. Um, uh -huh. The the idea is just to have an overall very flexible ship. That's that's what you can do with the the amount of uh, mid slots uh, you have. So you use your micro drive mainly to get in range of stuff and to split the enemy gang. Mm -hmm. So if you if you run away from the gang and they are uh, they want to tackle you, they will all burn at you, and they have different speeds, so they will yeah. they will split apart, and then you can you can hopefully take apart and like start by killing the weakest one, and then uh, go for the more tankiest one. The the scram like the combo micro drive after burner scram means that you have full range control of uh, pretty much any micro drive uh, yeah. usual micro drive scram ship yeah because yep. you can just if you don't want to fight it you just scram it yourself and you go away with the afterburner with the afterburner yeah so the idea is to um, mainly uh, yeah to pick up pick up your fights wisely you have a nice buffer so you can you can test the water, and if you don't like it, you go away. If you like it, you're able, with with the afterburner, you're able to do things like out-tracking um, yep. turrets, long-range mm -hmm. turrets. You can mm -hmm. definitely do that. If they don't have uh, something like two webs, or a web, or an after and an afterburner themselves. Um, so that means that you can yeah you can out track people you can also scram kite people so stay at nine kilometers uh, where they do much less dps you with the rockets you have you have pretty nice dps it's uh it's a bit more than with missile it's not that much more but uh, definitely a, a bit more and uh, as always selectable damage almost instant reload yeah. so test the water choose choose the right rockets and just punch through the hole very mm -hmm. fast mm -hmm. and the rockets do they still have quite a high alpha or not quite so much no they they actually have like pretty low low alpha but uh, yep. high dps yeah more constantly applied dps okay with the sharpshooter bonus and with javelin 
the here you can use javelin uh, ammunition so you have this lo long yeah. range javelin rockets with them you can you can hit point kites i think you you hit something like uh 20 25 yeah, kilometers is what is what i'm saying yeah. saying here yeah yeah but you you also have the mwd so if if like yeah. people want to kite you you can just hit your mwd a line away and they will be forced to chase you Actually, yeah, it's very hard uh, to hold. Rockets will hit an without, without, with without point, any yeah. problems. Yeah, yeah. It's just yeah, okay. they, they are gonna just getting hit just because um, the rockets, like they will tr travel inside your rocket. So even though they will, like even if they stay yeah, twenty-eight kilometers, get, yeah, yeah. Since since they need to catch up with you, like to, since yeah, they need to follow you, to, yeah. they will go into the rockets that has yeah. more, that have only 25 or 23, like depends depends on your skills. Mm, mm. Um, so yeah, yeah, this ship is this ship is not so fast for a micro dive ship, but it's also not really weak to uh, light guide either. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and we do have another dual prop fit. So this is dual prop active um so a lot less buffer on this but what are some what are some things that we can do so we've got a medium shield booster okay so what can we do what can we do with the active fit that we can't do with the passive fit yeah uh, actually this is basically the same fit but the two slots that were used for the extender are now used for uh, cap booster and uh, shield booster so obviously mm -hmm. the answer is we do pretty much the same thing but the big difference is that here we have if we can tank the dps the incoming dps then we can tank it um, pretty much forever or as long as we have cap boosters which yep. is fairly long because uh, you have an insane cargo bay in that ship it's 450 cubic meters so uh -huh. it's uh, it's yeah, more like yeah. uh, it's it's bigger than than most cruiser base mm, uh, so you have massive, you yeah. have a lot of this uh for uh, cap boosters uh 400s and yeah the idea if you if you can tank the dps with your active tank then you're gonna tank it with for pretty much forever and mm -hmm. you're gonna so you're not limited like with a passive buffer to the 25k uh, ehp that you had yeah the buffer looks quite low yeah even in defense mode i've only got like 7k buffer yeah uh i mean i mean the here not the overall but just the shields because that's yeah that's the most uh, the, the most important there that's, yeah but, yeah the, the shields the shield can be alpha through so uh, be careful uh with what you engage and like optionally you could change the rigs for more buffer if if you're not comfortable um like flying in a way that allows you to reduce damage all the time then definitely uh, maybe uh put some buffer instead of the speed rig for example you should definitely use uh, the blue peel booster. Yep. yep. That will uh, will give you some something like twenty percent, twenty percent boosting boosting. Yeah, standard um, should give you twenty percent. Yeah. To your shield to your shield booster. Yeah. So definitely, definitely use that one. Uh, obviously, if you're in loss, like this kind of fit gets crazy with crystal implants. Um, and as said, it's it's still it's more fragile than it was, and be careful because people can just alpha through uh, through your buffer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Alrighty, let's take a look at the last fit that we have. This is for PVE. Um, now, it is targeted towards specific rats, so specific um, PVE types. What is that exactly? I, I'm slipping on what that is now so this is uh this is a feed made for running uh guristas deities mm -hmm. and various uh faction warfare mi missions um it's basically you're using the strength the natural strength of the jackdo which is to have high uh, it's a caldari ship so high thermal and kinetic resists mm -hmm. uh since like the way um pve works in you know, empire space 
with the NPCs having uh, different types of damage according to their race. That means that like Serpentis and Charistos will do thermal and kinetic damage to you. Yeah. So you just like you, it's kind of uh, cheating, but you just you take a ship that is uh, strong against kinetic and thermal, and you add uh, kinetic and thermal resists, and that means that even with a, a small shield booster that does almost nothing, you have such high resists that you can actually reach pretty high tank. This has yeah, uh, above, I imagine I think, there with the ninety percent, you could yeah, you could tank quite a lot in that damage type for sure. So this, this, uh, if you go in defense mode, this thing will tank Kuristas for about 300 uh, DPS. Uh -huh. uh, no problem. Uh, that's that's the stable version. If you pulse, it's going to give yep. you about 300 DPS tank, uh, th which is more than enough for um, everything uh, sub five. So you can do what you can do with this is you can do DEDs, uh, for you can do four out of tens, and mm -hmm. you can do uh, level four missions that involve uh, this kind of damage types. And that's that doesn't have much, uh, much tank to chew through because your DPS DPS is kind of good, it's uh, it's uh, above 300. Mm -hmm. DPS, but it, uh, yeah, you don't really want to run missions or run sites with a lot of self repair, because you might uh, you might not be able to overrun it uh, very fast. It's quite fun as well, I find, to fly a smaller ship in these PVE sites where you need to rely, you know, a little bit on some kind of piloting maintaining some sort of transversal velocity and just trying to mitigate damage a little bit uh so that you can so that you can get through the site um yeah i do find i do find flying these smaller things to be to be fun that way um i think that's pretty much everything that we've got for you today though uh in the description of the video you will find a link to all of the fits that we've talked about today and i will also leave i'll also leave a link there that will show you all of the npc damage types uh, both what they deal, so the damage that the NPC will deal, and also what they are weak to. Uh, so with the jackdaw here, that will be um, that will be something that will be very useful for, for you, especially because you have selectable damage, so you can select any damage type, and then of course you can tank very well there for thermal and kinetic damages. Um, Mathia, are there any final words that you want to uh, to give us on the jackdaw here today? Yes, uh, just saying that if you haven't yet tried the Jagdo, uh, try it. It's an awesome ship. It's a very powerful ship. Uh, sadly, now people know that it's powerful. There was mm. there was that that sweet moment after the overall after the, the, tech the, the, 3D the nerf, yep. Where, yep. Where, and people considered that because the Jagdo was it was good before, but it was it was a bit gimmicky and not as mm. as yeah, good I mean, overall. Yep. And now it's. Uh, yeah, it became uh, one of the one of the strongest Tech Three destroyers, and not ev not everybody knows that yet. So <laughs> you will get easy kills with that. You will get fun kills. You can and definitely try it and fit it in your own way because you always have like in all the feats there you basically have at least three slots each time that you can swap and fit that you to have taste. different options for yep yep awesome yeah so you can you can use the fits that we've given you as a base to uh work from and you know tweak them to your style of flying uh, and definitely flying the jackdaw is something that i'm gonna have to get around to i believe actually the skill that i'm training in my queue right now is uh is Kaldari Tactical Destroyer 5. So uh, hopefully soon I will get out and uh, and fly a Jackdaw myself. Um, Mathia, thanks heaps for coming on once again today. Thank you, Rico. No worries. And thank you very much for watching. Uh, so until next time, remember as always from myself and Mathia Salenis, fly dangerous.